And from beautiful downtown Rancho Mirage, California, we have William Getty, Bill Getty, the most remarkable creator of reality-based television. Uh, you know, it's, it's reality-based. Okay, yes. fine. Okay. It's a different, it's not reality television. No, no, I've done talk shows and things. See, right. there's, there's a connotation there that is negative, and I think yeah. you're preying on it. I, yeah. think you're, I think you know that. I, I not only do I know that, I'm going to take you right back <laughs> to KOCO, where, K-O-C-O you are, yeah. where you are in Oklahoma City. That's right. Where I believe you grew up. My first job out of college. Absolutely. And it seems to me that the high technological challenge there was buffing the floors. Is I that did. Right? I buffed the floors at KOCO TV. I cleaned the prop room. Mm-hmm. And they would let you run the um, news camera mm-hmm. for 30 minutes. Uh, you know, it, 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 uh, I guess it was 5.30 and 10, 5 and 10. Yeah. I yeah. can't remember now. You know, central time. And, uh, and that's where, that was my first job. It was a great job, actually. And, and, I, and, and when I got up to the newsroom, which six months later, I was a cameraman. I didn't, you know, we've, I think we've, we may have had this discussion. I never wanted to leave my job. Once I finally got a job in television... <laughs> Once I forgot a job in television, it was so exciting for me that I didn't leave. So if, if I was on like a day shift at five o'clock. So when did this? I didn't go home. When did this disease strike you? When well, did I'll, you, t- I'll tell in you your exactly. Life, I'll Bill. tell you, I know exactly when it was. Well, first of all, my mother loved uh, movies and television. Right. You know, obsessed with it. And even though we grew up in Oklahoma and, and uh, I was born in Texas, we, you know, she was obsessed with all that stuff. She was obsessed with theater and so on. So I grew up around it. Um, and, um, but I didn't know anybody who made a living doing it. And my father was an oil man, you know? So he was like, you know, that doesn't sound like a real job. Right. And who's to say he was wrong, by the way, it's probably not exactly a real job, but, yeah. but, but I was obsessed with it. And what happens, it happened in my house. And I'm sure this I'm not alone in this, uh, was that Johnny Carson to me was the greatest. That was the greatest show of all time. Uh, um, the tonight show with Johnny Carson it's still, I still think of it as the greatest show of all time. Maybe right. the twilight zone second somewhere in there but those two are the greatest shows of all time and i would i would say to my dad um i know i'm supposed to school night and everything but don rickles is on or truman capote is on who i thought was such a weirdo i had to see it yeah and or jackie suzanne or you know uh, buddy rich and all these you know buddy hackett uh, all these people were I, i knew they'd come in and they'd tear up the place yeah, I think that's great. And that, by the way, just random note here, Bill, does that make me your Ed McMahon? You're my <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is no Ed McMahon here. We're both Johnny. Or, or we're both Fred de Cordova, who I yeah, also wanted to be. I was going to say. I, I wanted to be Fred de Cordova because he was on the sideline laughing, and I felt like he was sort of orchestrating things. He was also better dressed than anybody on the he show. Was, yeah, he was, yeah, he looked great. It looked like the world's best job. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's who I wanted to be. That's, yeah. that's a, so, so Carson. I thought Carson was, the, I, st- I still think that's the gold standard. I still think there's nobody like him. I would say maybe oh, but when I finally got to New York and was really uh, making this sort of television, I thought in that world um, and is, uh, was maybe Regis. I think Regis Philbin probably is right. as close to that standard as you could get. He yes. was as good at, at that as anybody short of Johnny. Not to mention the nicest man on the planet. Oh, yeah, he was a great guy. Yeah, great guy. Yeah. Totally lovely guy. Yeah. So, Bill, uh, take a leap here. Um, from KOCO, it is a long way to creating The View, which, by the way, after 25 years, remains the most profitable and most watched daytime episode, item that ABC has. Yeah. And how did that happen, Well, Barbara, Barbara Walters and I are launched The View. So it's, it's it, you know, and it was really Barbara Walters. Let me, let me, it's hard to, what happened was I had the best job in television, according to, to everybody I talked to, which right. was producing the Barbara Walters specials. Right. So like, I don't know, four times a year, we do, we do original shows and we do a repeat show. And, and, um, and I did that for 10 years and I thought it was the best job in television. It was, however, a little tedious and a little repetitive. Right. And by the time you were writing the second time, the second time you'd done a profile on, say, Bette Midler, you were like, oh, I've got to write this again. All right. And then there's nothing wrong with Bette. It's the job I'm talking about. Um, And I would watch, um, and I I told you I love Regis, and I'd watch uh, live, and I thought, well, if... Fred DeCordova had the greatest job. That Gelman, he's got got a job. Mm -hmm. That's a great job. What a fun... That looks like so much fun. And honestly... 
and if everybody's be completely honest about this, uh, most of us got into it because we thought it'd be fun. Oh yeah, yeah. You know. I totally understand that. I mean, listen, I'm from North Carolina, as you know. Yeah. I would go to a movie in a movie theater, the Carolina Theater in downtown Durham, which was in those days simply a tobacco town. Right. By the way, so much a tobacco town that if you parked your car outside by the end of the day, a fine layer of tobacco dust <laughs> would have settled over the car. You could write your name in yeah. it every day. So that idea of escapism in the more sophisticated, bigger world was huge. So my next question is, was this you or Barbara or a combination? Well, I mean, this is Barbara's idea. There's no question about it. What, what happened was we were doing, a, um, we're doing a, uh, one of these remotes where we were, we're compiling a bunch of different shows, and, and we were at that restaurant that's in, oh, I can't remember. It's right at the Brooklyn Bridge. It's a famous restaurant. can't remember it. And we're doing these wraparounds, and it's beautiful with the Brooklyn Bridge in the back. And it's taking us forever to set it up. I don't know why. And so the two of us, and I had been saying to her, I'd really love to do a daytime show. Doesn't right. live seem like a great show? Wouldn't it be fun if we did a daytime show? And she says, I don't know. That doesn't, I don't, don't know if that, it sounds dangerous. Which it was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that appeals to yeah, me. Right. But I had planted the seed, I can tell you that. Um, and she came, she came to me and said, you know, when I have a conversation with my daughter, Jackie, um, it's so interesting. We come at the world from such different points of view. Right. And, uh, and I think there's a show in that. And I said, you mean like just a, a mom and daughter? She says, no, no. The, what they used to do was this show in the 50s called Girl Talk with um, uh, Virginia Graham. And I went like, yeah, you know, I've never heard of that. Right. And, uh, and I sa she says, and it was kind of like they sat around a, a table. There's no audience. And we would, they would, uh, you know, t t it was kind of like a ladies who lunch thing. Right. You know, I mean, I could, as she described it, I realized what she was talking about. And I thought, okay. And so if, if I had anything to do with the view, it's that, that I saw the show a bit saucier than that. Right. And, and I knew that we needed an audience, otherwise it wouldn't work. And so, I mean, I'd say together we'd created the final version of the view, but the original seed of the idea is definitely Barbara Walters. And so Barbara Walters was, among other things, a really credible, thoughtful journalist. Yes, she was. She did and serious she did, and work. It is, and, she, and she's, uh, she's one of, uh, she did serious work, and messing with her brand was like messing with the Mickey Mouse. You know, right. it was just right. something you didn't do. Uh, it's like, it was, she's too important, too important to the industry, too important to women, Right. Um, and I think eventually she's too important to people who are aging because what she did was she did live television until she was in her mid-80s. So I think she was a, she worked on many fronts as an icon. Right. So when, when we start, so I said, uh, I, I think that's a great idea. I'd love to do that. Uh, there was no space for it. So, but, but you know what? This is, this is the truth about, about everything in life. I don't care if, what it is you want to do. Um, tell everyone. Right. Tell everyone. Right. If you want to own a restaurant or you want to, whatever it is, be a chef or you want tell everybody that that's your dream. And, right. and, and I, and I think a lot of people are embarrassed at their dreams. Right. It, t tell everyone it's your dream. And, and so I started telling everyone, I really want to do a daytime talk show. That's what I want to do. And they're like, you have the best job in television. Why would you do it? You don't know anything about daytime. It's not your thing. No, no. That's what I want to do. And I told everyone, and one of the people I told was Linda Fenson, who was, was uh, the, you know, uh, uh, the production executive for the Barbara Walters specials and kind of my mentor and helped me, th you know, through the job originally. And it's another story. But anyway, without her, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be where I am. And Linda, and I got on my commuter train back, you know, after writing that Bette Midler uh, bio. Yes. <laughs> and yes. I got on my commuter train back to Connecticut. And I got a call on the train, and she said, "Weren't you? Didn't you say once you wanted to do a daytime show?" And I said, mm. "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I still want to do a daytime show. Yeah, and with Barbara. Yeah, I said I want to do a daytime show with Barbara." She says, "Well, they just canceled this show called uh, Real Friends. Um, it was Carolyn Marilyn Real Friends, and I came to learn that it was one in this long string of shows that had been canceled at eleven o'clock right. Eastern time." Uh, before that, it was uh, Mike and Maddie. Before that, it was the home show. Before that, it was I don't know what it was. Anyway, I don't think they'd had a sh I don't think they'd had a, a hit there since Family Feud in like the seventies or eighties. So they do you the favor of setting you up for failure. Well, I didn't know any of this. Um, this is all the knowledge I learned way late. 
Mm-hmm. And I, and I call Barbara up and I say, let's, let's go in with a pitch. And she says, I, you know, you write it up. I'll, uh, you know, I'll come in with you. And I think she didn't take it that seriously. Right. And, um, and I figured, I, I mean, I, I plan for failure. I'm not, I'm not a fool. <laughs> I, I understand that most things do not, you know, Especially are not going to pan out. In entertainment, planning for failure yeah, is your I plan, best friend. I plan for failure. Right. But I did work it up, and I, and I, I wrote up this thing where we approached the topics of the day live with an audience, and I had a great title. It's called Everybody's a Critic. I still wow. have that. <laughs> Catchy title, Bill. <laughs> Okay, good. Everybody's a critic, uh-huh. and uh, and uh, and I still have the the, the proposal, mm-hmm. and uh, and I went in and they said uh, it was strange. You know, we did with this pitch with uh, I think it was Pat Philly who deserves a lot of credit for for greenlighting this, and and my friend uh, uh, Jessica Guff who would help me put all this together, and and uh, and we we they said yeah we kind of like this maybe we can develop it. So I didn't realize that that's a long process and, you know, right. uh, so we started, uh, talking about what it would be. And they said, Oh, by the way, we hate the title. And mm-hmm. I said, okay, fine. I said, I don't care. That's fine. You got, you got to give up on stuff like that. I, that's fine. It is a terrible title. Did I say everybody's a critic? I didn't mean that. I was just, <laughs> it was a placeholder. Um, anyway, yes. mm-hmm. anyway, uh, we start, uh, we started to develop the show. Yeah, yeah. that's wonderful. Now, here's what I want to know. When we set up this podcasting company in beautiful yeah. downtown Rancho Mirage. Yeah. You went out and bought this table that we are sitting at. I did, at, yeah. And you had this table shipped in here and assembled yep. in this very studio. That's correct. And so the <laughs> table at The View, did you go out and buy that table? Yes, we did. The, the, the funny thing about The View was there was no real money put into it. And I know they would probably disagree with me, but I got to tell you, they had, their expectations were very low. Right. So what we, what we, we soon learned... <laughs> was that, that, one, that once we started development, we got approached by Rune Arledge, who was the president of news at ABC and a very big figure right. in all of this. And legend. Barbara Walters, legend, and Barbara Walters worked for Rune. And Rune said, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> the terrible idea. <laughs> Nothing like Disaster support. for you, Barbara. Uh, it, 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 you, it's, it's a d- daytime television. Barbara's like, no, 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 we won't, we won't do anything controversial. I'm, meanwhile, I'm thinking, that's exactly what we're going to do. Yeah. Oh, it's like the whole that's the whole point of this mm-hmm. is like we're going to do things you never do right in daytime but i shut up and um and he uh he said and by the way that's the world's worst time slot because yes. it's been beaten up so badly over the years by bad programming right that half of the affiliates don't even take it right they run their own thing they do I don't know, repeats of Matlock or something. I don't right. know. They put, right. they put something else there. And, so, and, we, and we looked it up, and lo and behold, half the country wouldn't even get the show. So you were up against brunch in Cleveland. That's exactly right. They did local uh, shows that were, were, were whatever it was. Yeah, exactly. Local news shows and everything, uh, everything else. Syndicated shows of other ilk and so on. And, and so we were launching the show and missing, you know, like... Boston, You're right? <laughs> you know, okay. Tulsa. You know, we were missing all these different places around the country, which you know, it's very hard to, very hard to hit your number if half the country doesn't get the show. By the uh, way. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so, so we and I, for some reason we we forged ahead, um, even though he was not happy about it, um, and um, and we started we started looking at talent, you know. Mm. To, um, and we, we started, whoa, 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 slow down. Yeah. We started looking at talent. Now, yeah. wait a second. You now got an hour of daytime television, right? which is a big deal. And yes. even though only half the country gets to see it, right. a lot of people will turn in, tune in at that moment on those mornings yeah. during the daytime, particularly women. So you're going to go out and cast this thing. Right. So without much money, by the way. Yeah. Okay, great. So now we're not going to pay people. Yeah, anything. we're not going to pay and much money. Great, even better. And then right. we're going to cast it. We're paying you in the, in the ability to work with Barbara Walters. So the unpaid part reminds me of our podcast. Yes, yeah, it's very similar. It's a very, it's a very similar, similar idea. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just want to make yeah. sure that that's... Uh, unstructured, too. It's a very yeah. similar idea. Okay. Yeah, we started, we started with... Uh, we knew um, uh, Jessica Guff, a uh, producer, uh, was really uh, responsible for a lot of our success early on, was um, 
uh, she said, you got to meet my friend, uh, uh, Meredith Vieira. And I said, I, I know Meredith. She's like, but she's not a lot of fun. She did 60 minutes. And I said, I need something fun. She says, oh, no, she's fun. <laughs> so, so I had, had a, a lunch with her. Right. And by the end of it, I thought, you know, she's kind of fun. There and, you go. And, it would be not, and we needed somebody to run it. Because here's the deal. <laughs> Barbara couldn't be there every day. And this right. is the important thing. And Rune was like, you're not going to be there every day because that's a dangerous place to be. Rune did know television. He did know what he was talking about. Right. And he says, I don't want you there live every day talking about whatever the hell. Right. Um, and so a couple of days a week, and you can't be running this thing. So we needed somebody who was good at that, and Meredith was, had that skill in spades. So uh, we, Meredith was sort of a – she wasn't cast immediately – but we sort of figured that was the first piece of the puzzle. Right. You know, and then Barbara right. would come. We, the, the original idea was that we would find someone to replace Barbara three days a week. That Barbara would do two days a week, and we would find someone. That right. someone ended up being Joy Behar. Uh, and okay. Joy Behar would replace her on those other three days. And the concern was that when Barbara wasn't there, it was like Elvis has left the building. Yeah. There was a lot, a lot of concern about that. But it really wasn't so much that. It was it, that everybody loved seeing Barbara and would have been happy to have her there five days a week. What they really missed was they liked seeing Joy five days a week. Right. That was the right. big thing. That's interesting. They wanted Joy okay. and Barbara five days a week. They right. wanted everybody five days a week. And this was sort of the nature of television, that familiarity is important. Yes. So we do this, this, this big, um, I don't know if I'm getting this order right, but, but basically I talked to, I say we, talk to hundreds of people. Some of them, you would know their names. And um, many of them were interested, but I knew okay. that we didn't so pay enough. Slow down just a second. Right. So I understand that there's some rate limiting effects here. You've got yes. some thresholds. Yes. One is you're not going to pay anybody. Not going to pay anything. All right. And the second no, is... No, we're paying something, but it's... Well, I understand. I understand. Yeah, but, you're you not going to get rich on this. Yeah. This is, this is like telling a major actor that they're going to do the Broadway show for $1,000. That's so exactly we, right. Right. So... Then, you look at a hundred people. What are the two worst ideas you looked at? Well, I mean, I think that I don't want to say their names uh, because you would know them and they're lovely people. But the, uh, there's a big difference between being an actor and being a broadcaster, being a correspondent, being an opinion person. Right. Um, and it's, and most of our bad ideas were actors and models. Got it. Well, I, you know what? I Actors get that. and models, that was not a good idea. Yes. I'm sorry to those of you who recognize yourself in that, mm -hmm. it, but it, it, it's not that I think uh, uh, worse of you. Uh, I just think st stick to acting. That's yeah. it. Or modeling. Or, or modeling, whatever. Right. right. Absolutely. Good idea. Yeah. So how do you winnow this down to the tiny group that actually show up behind the table that you go out and buy? Well, after talking to 100 plus people, we found, I think, 30 that we wanted to test, something like 30. Okay. We took a room at the Essex House on, on Central Park South and it, another room f to put some cameras in. So, 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 so Barbara and I and a few other people uh, uh, sat in this kind of control room area with a monitor. And in the next room, uh, we would set four people. So actually, there were three rooms because one room was a waiting room. So there's a waiting room with all the 30 people all sitting around saying, when do I go on? Right. And, and so we picked four people that we thought sort of were the, sort of fit the bill. Right. Uh, we picked uh, uh, Meredith Vieira, Star Jones, who was a lawyer that had come recommended, um, Joy Behar, comedian, the, the way many of us knew, and, um, and a woman named Debbie Matinopoulos, who none of us knew. But Barbara, it was very important to Barbara that there was someone young there because that's okay. the original concept of the show. She said, it's like me talking to my daughter. If I don't have that, right. it doesn't work for me. And I, and I was not as concerned about that, to be totally honest. I just figured, the chemist, let's get the chemistry right, make sure there's some diver diversity, uh, and so, that'll be fine. So, Bill, was that the first group you had in the That's the first group we put in. So here's, so here's, here's the amazing thing to me. Yeah. We put this group down, and we just start throwing things at them. Do right. you believe there's, uh, I don't know, life on other planets? Go. Um, what do you think about spanking? Go. You know, whatever it is. With, with, with a variety of topics. And they right. were great on it. They were fantastic. And Barbara and I still remember this moment where Barbara and I in the room next door, and we're listening to them, and we turn to each other, and we go, 
we're geniuses. Oh, man. We. Oh, good. This. Oh, Bill. Can't miss. This is, yeah. We. <laughs> Have have grabbed uh, grabbed uh, the golden ring here. Have you and, know? And and and, and 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 I should say though that after that we would replace one of them with somebody sitting in the, another another comedian, right? Another Meredith Vieira would be replaced by some other journalist, right? Um, so on and so forth. Another young one would come in, and we spent the next I think it was two days of this, if I remember correctly. Right. And by the end of the second day, we turned to each other and said. Not one of these worked except the first group. Right. So we weren't geniuses. Right. It's really entirely about picking the right group. You, you were geniuses, oddly enough. I well, mean, we who, were, we were geniuses you, to recognize that, what, I guess. What were the odds I don't of know. that happening randomly and that it, being the perfect I think that our gut, told us, our gut told us that was the best combination. But there were other people that we really liked. Yeah. And, and it's very interesting what happens on our show. You know, I, I did something once with them. Um, I always like, I'll, I'll use her name because I love her and, and I respect her and she's a great talent. It's Vanessa Williams, you know, the Broadway star Vanessa right. Williams. Of course. Fantastic. And we had her fill in once and I thought, you know, I think she'd be really good on the show. Um, right. And this is, this is, I'm getting off track here, but that's what we do. And, and <laughs> Vanessa, Vanessa's, this is a 10 years into show. Whenever it is, The Blind Side had just come out. Remember right. the blind sign? Of course. And it was the, the movie of the moment. And, and we have this meeting before the show, which is that uh, where we decide what we're going to talk about. We don't talk about it, but we decide whether it's good enough to talk about. And one of the things with the blind side, what do you think? And we all said, yeah, it's great. It's fantastic. We should talk about this. And, what if, and she says, you know, I'm sort of sick of these white people say black, black children's movies. I'm sick of it. It's sort of like, you know, it's, it's just one example but it's not, uh, it's not my experience. I think that everybody o overreacts to it. There's too much of it. And, uh, and she had a whole variety of reasons, which is why she found it offensive. Right. And I said, great. Yes. Do that. Go out and do that. She says, I will. And she got out there, and we had the discussion, and it was an extremely dull discussion. Yep. And she never said a word. So, and I went to her afterwards, yeah. and I said, and this is what the point I'm trying to make. I went to her after, and I said, when? She says, you know, it's something different about being when you're out there. You know that people are going to chase you. You know that people are going to be upset with what you're saying. And I just didn't want to do that. I didn't want to do that to myself. That's what is important. Yeah. You have to be able to do that. So, Otherwise, you can't be on the show. So, Bill, question. Have you ever been in a car wreck? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you know... <laughs> in a car wreck, that in those moments when you realize that there is actually a wreck going on here, right. things tend to slow down. Right. And the car wreck is perceived yes. by those both who watch it and are in it as a slow motion event yes. that is, has inevitability about it. Right. And so what's it like when you have a guest that you count on go out on the show and they suddenly turn from the interesting, witty, articulate person they were in the green room mm -hmm to the most boring, non-responsive animal on the planet. I've had this happen a number of times. The, the, uh, the, the only person I'll use, and he's, he's a lovely man, is um, um, I, had, I used to get someone who wanted to say something special for Barbara's birthday. Right. And I would get them, you know, on, on, uh, on Barbara's birthday, they'd bring a special guest who wanted to, say, to come on and do And I got um, a person we had recently interviewed, for uh, Mr. Holland's opus, Richard Dreyfus. Right. And Richard Dreyfus came out, sat down, didn't mention her birthday, if I remember correctly. Oh, good. And started talking about, I don't know, the Constitution or something. Mm -hmm. And Barbara, and I, and I still remember these, it's funny how these things, your life passes before you. Barbara's looking at him, and she's looking over at me like, what the hell? What is this? And i like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We had a whole thing. Yeah. There was like a cake and yep. a thing and yep. I don't know. And so we, he finished. I don't know whether he just had a, a brain fart or whatever it was, but whatever, whatever happened, he didn't get to any of it. It was extremely tedious. Sorry, Richard. It was. And, uh, and we got him off as fast. So, so I, I like the things that I like the actual train wrecks. Right. You know, I like, you know, Danny DeVito drunk on right. the show. 
Right. That's my kind of train wreck. Right. Fine. The, the Danny DeVito drunk on the show, it's like, give him a second segment. It's yeah, great. That's, I understand. Bring that. on the chimpanzee. You know, right. bring on a, bring, bring on the crazy, uh, whatever it is. I mean, that's, that's, that stuff right. is the stuff I like. But anyway, let me get back to this. Because okay. do you want me to finish this or not? No, go ahead. Please. All right. That's the kind of person you need on the show. So what happened is we pick this show, and if, if that is depends, this is depends on whether you want me to keep going with this. I thing. do absolutely. Okay, fine. So we, because <laughs> I'm not sure. I see something in your eye, like you may want to go somewhere else, but that's fine. If you want to, it's fine. They say, let's do some tests. Right. And I said, let's, as long as we can test with Regisville, I mean, if you'll come in and Regis did our show, he did he did a test for the show, and he was fantastic. And yep. I said that doesn't prove anything. Regis is always fantastic. Right. He comes in, he tears it up. What's this stupid show? What are, we got, what are you guys doing here? You yeah. don't know what you're doing. You right. know, it's like, he's, 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 it's great. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then we had um, 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 Lou Diamond Phillips and, uh, and the woman who, uh, Lou Diamond Phillips, was, I'll always be in debt to because he, he did the whole show for nothing, and he just did it to help us out. I, was, I still think he's amazing. And the woman who who's, you think I would love her for doing the same thing, who did Cinderella in like the sixties? Leslie Ann Warren, could be. Yeah, <laughs> I want to say yes. Um, yeah, and, and uh, they did the show, and so we were ready to go. And they said, "Oh, I said, where are we doing this thing?" And they said, uh, "You know, we've got this studio already." Right. And oh, I said, cool. "I said, oh, okay, great. Okay. Where, where is it? Is it down at the end of Sixty Sixth Street? It's a, it's a soap opera studio." And uh, and I well, went, "Let's go look at it." So I walk in, and there's this soap studio. <laughs> studio. And they said, we don't have any money to build a set. Oh, good. Well, I said, well, yeah. I said, well, 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 well where are we going to put people? I said, oh, against the wall over here somewhere. I said, well, where are we going to put the show? I mean, where are we, where's it? You just put a table out there somewhere. So I'm getting to your table. And that's really kind of you. This is how long it takes me to get to, to a point. Just <laughs> get a table out there somewhere. We had no yeah. money. Our director went to Pottery Barn. Mark Gentile, again, wouldn't be here without Mark Gentile. Yep. Or, or Alexandra Cohen or a bunch of these people that were just hugely important to this show. Uh, and he said, I found a table at Pottery Barn. It looked sort of like this table. Yeah. You know, it said it had a flap. Ah. Uh-huh. It had the flap that went down. He says it has this flap that goes down. We just paste the view on top of it. Perfect. Just, just, just put, the, put the logo right there on. on Art the direction at its finest. And if yep. you look today... Even with its space age, uh, 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 Star Trek uh, Enterprise setting, um, the the table is some version of that. That is wonderful. Yeah, so it's a pottery barn table. We have a pottery barn table in someone else's set. That's the that's the kind of confidence we've okay, got. So here. help me, help me with replacing your fine original title. Okay. With the view. It just so happens that you're actually, that's the next thing that happens in this. So you have you have. You've done this sequentially appropriate. I'm in the studio, and I'm saying I got to replace everyone's a critic. Everybody's a critic, and uh, I said I don't know. And I said, but there's this big window, mm-hmm. and the window looks out on fake brownstones. I guess it was supposed to be Brooklyn. There was a, some soap called The City, okay, that had lasted a very short period of time, and Morgan Fairchild Aye. was in it. Aye, they. Yeah, and uh, and that's gone. So now Morgan is gone, but the set is still here. Okay. And the window has the the brownstones in it. And I said, well, we're stuck with this. How about there's like a view? There's like points of view, point, uh, something with a view, because that's what we're doing. We're doing points of view. With there must be something. And I said, uh, the view from here. And Barbara said, the view from here. That's a great idea. The, the network said, the view from here, perfect. This is kind of view. The view we, you know how this is. You run a, a, a check on things, and, and they, uh, what do they call that, a copyright or a whatever, whatever it is. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it came back that there's some show in Canada at that time, maybe still. It's called The View From Here. And so we shortened it to The View, which never made sense to me because it always like this point, it had to be many points of view. And I don't know, but I, I stuck with it, and uh, it turned out to be a good title. It's a great title, and those wily Canadians getting ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. So that. now you've got a title. Yeah. You've got some people around the desk. 
the yep. pottery barn has earned six hundred and eighty dollars. <laughs> exactly. Everything is fine. <laughs> yeah. Life is moving forward. Right. How do you get this thing to work? Okay. Well, what happened was that there was zero faith in this. And I know that, uh, that Pat and a few other people may disagree, but I, I got the gist of that. Uh, that uh, that uh, we were going to um, launch this. Here's how you know, because we launched it on, uh, on August 11th, 1997. Wow. August 11th. How many shows launch on August 11th? I was going to say, you know, in the movie business, which I know a little bit about. Yeah. Let's we, say. we try August 11 means everyone's at the beach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in television, it's worse than that. Mm. It is really, everybody's in repeats. And I think what, what everyone thought was, let's, you know, Bar shortly before this, Barbara came to me and said, and had one of those like moments that people have, which is, this is going to be terrible. Right. This is going to be the worst thing that ever happened in my career. Absolutely. And, and you know, I, I get that. I, Justifiable terror. I, absolutely. I totally get it. And I said it was really important. It was really important to me. And we're committed. It's too far gone. Right. So you need to get it out of your head. And, and don't worry, you're only here two days a week. And I'm sure right. the disasters will happen on the other three. Right. And she goes, uh, okay, fine, fine, fine. And so uh, we launch it on the August 11th to very little fanfare mm -hmm. and not amazing numbers. Right. Of course, half the, uh, half the country doesn't get the show. Let's yeah. start with that. Right. And, uh, and we, we, we built it up a little bit. We, we sort of, that we made the tweaks that you need to make. Right. Uh, that, which is that joys came every day. That seemed to help some. That sounds good. That happened over the course of time. Uh, but we had a problem, which is that the audience just didn't respond to Debbie. They thought that we were um, looking down on them, that we'd picked somebody. So it wasn't really Debbie's fault. It wasn't Debbie's fault at all. She was way too young to be sitting at that table with right. Barbara Walters right. and, and Joy Behar. Well, and I was going to say, you have a and, lot of battle-hardened yeah. veterans right. around that table. It's right. A, it's and, you know, you place. go to the research, and we should do something one day on just research, the research things we've been to, because I, I can tell a thousand stories about research. Yes. But we went to the research, and they would say things that you, you know, like uh, that we just can't stand that Debbie. She's just irritating, and the young people were just furious about it. And, and it's funny how in research you learn little things. Like um, they'll go like, you know, I like the, the black lady that's a lawyer, but I don't know her name. It's like, oh, huh. we'll have to, we have to, we drive that home. That's one of the things you do and you find the little right. things. We Absolutely. Like, what's our yeah. branding no, things that say Star Jones. And, and, but with Debbie, they didn't want that. They just wanted her to go away. And so we kept, and I didn't want her to go away. I thought we could make it work. And I have a tendency to hang on th to things too long. I think every executive that I've ever worked for would say that, that is true. Yeah. I tend to hang on to things too long. I'm very conservative in my approach to things like that. I, th right. I think that even th people who say I don't like that are sometimes watching because they don't like it. I have a, I have a concern about it and doing anything rashly. But after a year and a half, I had to give up on my concern. Right. No, I totally understand that. But you're right about the misleading nature of research. Yes. I once had a preview audience tell me that a film we'd made with the, uh, an estimable piece of uh, motion picture history called Gable and Lombard. Oh, yes, I saw it? that. Yeah, I'm sorry for you. That's terrible. Yeah, it's a terrible that's damn your, movie. That's your movie? Uh, it's sadly. Oh, and wow. so, yeah, so the mighty, <laughs> mighty Universal. <laughs> I, love, I love that in this show I can make fun of your movies. This oh, is so please. great. It, it, that was right James ahead. Brolin and um, um, Jill Clayburgh. Jill Clayburgh. Who was much too good an actress to be in a film that bad. Oh, wow. And in any event, we previewed <laughs> that damn thing in Honolulu, of all places. Yeah. And we got a standing ovation from the audience. So yeah. all I can say is when you're on a package tour in Hawaii, mm. you will go see anything. Yeah, I guess so. Mm. Hey, uh, yeah, nobody, nobody does that sort of thing in Honolulu. That's a really bad idea that, anyway. Well, all of it, everything about it was a bad idea from the beginning yeah. to end. It is funny when you do this research, and it's a little off track here, but, but like you don't research and say, you know, San Francisco. Right. Like that's not a town to that's learn right. anything. Right. You know, you can research in Dallas. You don't even research in New York. You go to Jersey. No, you know, no, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's I, a way of figuring out what the folks are thinking. Over many years, I was in every barbecue restaurant in the Midwest. There you go. So there you go. Anyway, so where were we? 
So what we're doing now is trying to figure out how the show gels. And oh, how it eventually you've, becomes you've a just, hit. You've just said adios to okay. Debbie. And That's right. the show has been reduced right. from I'm, fanfare I'm, I'm working up to, to a crescendo fair. here. All right. Okay. Oh. So, <laughs> so, so what happens is I go to Debbie, and Debbie and I are still very close. Very close friends. She's I a love nice her. Person. I love her dearly. Very I nice talk person. to her all the time, yep. <laughs> and she knows how I feel about all this. I go to right. Debbie and say, "I'm sorry, this is not working out," and we let Debbie go. And I had an idea, and this is my idea. It's very, very hard to own ideas in this business, right? Mm-hmm. If, yes. if everybody thinks it's their idea, but my yeah. idea was instead of doing our um, research, our uh, uh, behind the scenes to figure out who should replace her. Let's do it on camera. Okay. So let's make it a contest. Oy vey. Okay. And so well, in that sense, I, right. I do reality shows and to a certain degree. And I said that, and that was the world of reality television was, was coming up then. So I said, this is what the kids do anyway. Right. So okay. we made it a contest and we got down to the final three and they were uh, obviously Lisa Ling, one right. we chose, uh, who I love, and, and right. is, uh, has a, a lot of responsibility for making this a successful show. Um, and uh, Lauren Sanchez. You know how you know Lauren Sanchez? Uh, yes. Uh-huh. Lauren so Sa- Lawrence. If anyone, if anyone, A, if anyone's listening to this broadcast, and B, if anyone who's listening might have looked in the gossip columns yes. over the last three months, yes. Lauren Sanchez might have turned up as the new bride of... I don't think she's a bride yet, is she? I think so. I she, are they married? I, I think know. it's a girlfriend still. Oh, it's a Jeff girlfriend. Bezos. Jeff, Jeff Bezos. Bezos. Right. Every time you see, like, he comes off a rocket ship, mm-hmm. she's there applauding. Right. Uh, she was uh, perfectly fine. I didn't, do, I didn't think she was going to get it, uh, but we needed three uh, to make a, a you know, a, so does a this contest. And by the way, I haven't told you the third person. Was oh. a name, her name is uh, Rachel Campos, a woman I love. I think she has right. a job at Fox News now. She's she, conservative. Yep. Uh, yeah. I, I, I she's still good. think the world she's, of her. In fact, good. she was in both contests. She she came again when Lisa left and and didn't win again. But neither here nor there. Point is, we we picked <laughs> uh, <laughs> we Bill. picked Lisa Ling. Everybody thought she was the best for it. She's very smart, and um, and we did this big announcement. And there was like this like chair that turned around, and it was Lisa Ling, and everybody went crazy. It's Lisa got the job. And it's very interesting. What happened with our ratings was that from that moment that we started that contest to the time uh, to really today, right. the show has been a hit show. That is Somewhere amazing. in the middle of that contest, our numbers came up. And then uh, the announcement of her, I was afraid, oh, we announce her and our numbers will drop. They did not drop. And the show has been a hit all these years. I know it has. This show is actually a remarkable piece creatively because it's actually pioneered territory across the day part yeah. that nobody else was talking about. Well, that was it. I mean, when I went into to, to broadcast standards and and they said, you always have a big meeting with broadcast standards uh, yes. because they want you to, to put the, the fear of God in you. You know, right, it's like, course. here's the deal and you, here's what you don't do. And it's Disney, by the way. And, it, oh, you yeah. know, we're going to, you know, mm-hmm. you know, don't, don't mess with the mouse and so on. Right. And, and so we, so I sat with this woman at broadcast standards. She says, I'm, this is just a formality of this meeting. I'm sure you and Barbara are not going to do anything that's going to get us in trouble. <laughs> and I said, and I, 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 I said, Oh no, no, no. We need to, you need to know that that's, uh, this is exactly the sh- sort of show you will get in trouble with. If this show goes the way I want it to go, you will be talking to me on a weekly basis. And she Love said, well, what? I said, no, it, it needs to be that to work. Yeah. People need to step out on the high wire. They must, they must be that. And it's, and that's been the truth. And, and I don't, and I would say that probably the difference the, 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 with, between the show that Barbara saw and the show that I saw it was a generational difference. Right. Just, you know, people were much nicer in her generation. Yes. Than absolutely. people, than baby boomers. Yeah. Like me. Yeah. They or were me. just a nicer, more genteel loud, uh, yeah. crowd, you know? And so she saw the show as a little softer and a little, and I saw the show as uh, rough and tumble. And I even put up a sign that said, make sparks. I took it with me when I left. I said, you know, because I got tired of boring shows. I, if, if everybody went out there and said, we've got this great conversation and it isn't great. 
it made me nuts. So, Bill, just in the world of decor, would you put that Make Spark sh- sh- uh, sign up on the wall here in our studio? Place? I think I, I would have no problem. The problem, our problem, is that we we don't necessarily take offense at anything. See the, oh. see see you know what I'm saying? Like you could say, I think that's terrible, and I'll be like, yeah, you know, so, it's fine. But Bill, how do you explain this text I just got from Amazon that all of our deliveries <laughs> have been canceled because of your Lauren Sanchez piece? <laughs> That's true, man. Can yeah. you imagine? Gosh, mm-hmm. yeah. when I saw when I saw that, with, that Lauren Sanchez was with him, I thought, you know, and she's not a kid now. I mean, no. she's uh, you know, she's you know, got to be fifty or something, right? Uh, I wouldn't go there, but yes. Uh, okay, so I know. I just thought it was interesting that that Lauren Sanchez was one of the original contestants for I Lisa Ling's seat or Debbie Matinopoulos' seat I, at the View. I think that's amazing. So now, take us across the threshold. From you've got your group of people, you've got your pottery barn table, you've got the right producers. Uh, you know, standards and practices is breathing down your neck. Yes. Rune Arledge thinks you're going to die any second. Yes. Uh, Barbara's worried about her career as she should be. Yes. And you're out there pushing make sparks. I'm pushing so make sparks. When do you know that it actually comes together? And well, how I, do you see that? I see it. I, it actually happens before the Debbie change. Uh-huh. It happens because we are parodied on Saturday Night Live. Oh, my God. High and, praise. And when and it's really terrible. It's a terrible parody. I mean, it's like, Barbara, you've got to get off this show kind of parody. Like, right. they put uh, De- Debbie in a, a bag with a raccoon. I mean, they, they do. It's insane, <laughs> this parody. And, uh, and it's very interesting. And Barbara, I remember Barbara talking to me and saying, this is awful. And I said, this is the no. best thing yeah. that's ever happened. I said, I, until this moment, I wasn't sure we were going to be around. You guys are golden. I said, I think we're going to be around now. If, if and she said, why would that be good? And I said, because in order to get the joke, you have to know what it is. That's right. That means that people know what this is. And I wasn't sure about that at, yeah. at that time. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. And, and they confirmed that we were a cultural so it was touchstone. Yes. And from that point on, I was not worried about it. Wow. Cultural touchstone you were. So in that first year, Mm -hmm. no, in the first year you had Debbie. In the second year you had Debbie was Lisa Ling. Yeah, well, it it was the middle of, it was right before Christmas, which is always a great time to let somebody go, by the way. I I, I highly recommend it. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And that's not, we let her go. And then we started, I think, right after the first year, we started the contest. And I think we announced Lisa in you know may of the second season so right so you know so your hr department didn't have any problem with that christmas firing kind of well thing. it was you know it was 1998 yes you know okay something 99 so 98 yeah in that second year when you're in the groove and you've got more or less the permanent gang around the pottery barn table what what made you know that this thing really clicked besides SNL. And I agree with you. That's a huge cultural yeah. touchstone and it means their hip people are paying attention to your yeah. show. And suddenly it's not ladies who lunch anymore. Right. I think that, I think that the, uh, I think that everybody got on board with what we needed to do. Oh, I think that w- what, what happens is you'd come in the morning, you'd have a, have a morning meeting, which I assume they still do. And in the morning meeting, there would be a list uh, and, and this list would have uh, 30, 40 topics on it. Mm-hmm. And it would be uh, everything serious and everything silly would be on right. that list. It would be, uh, you know, uh, people don't like, uh, you know, Kim Kardashian's a new swimsuit and uh, there's a war in Ukraine. Right. And uh, it, it's all of that. that and then you pick your topics. So in, the, in, in those days, we only did one hot topic at the beginning, but eventually we did two or three. Right. Um, now I think the whole show is hot topics basically, because it's like more like a news, uh, a cable news show. But in those days you'd pick two or three hot topics and you'd pick probably eight or 10 topics that you knew that, that, that were going to work. And by the way, in that, in that, um, meeting in, in the morning with where they'd say, uh, there's a, I don't know, uh, there's a new accusation of, against, um, I don't know, Michael Jackson or something right. like that. And, and if we all had exactly the same opinion, unless it was a, a, something you couldn't ignore, it was just you had to talk about it. If we all had exactly the same opinion, and I say we, if they all had the ba- same opinion, and I knew it was going to be a bore, we got rid of it. And everybody sure. understood that. And I think that's, that's an essential part of this. Yeah. Everybody yeah. has to understand that, that, oh, there's a prevailing opinion about Harvey Weinstein. Sure. 
there's prevailing opinion about it. So, so the first time that it's announced what's happened with him, and the second and the third, yeah, you got to do it. But if it's a, if it's just more of the same, right? Get rid of that, right? Move on to something else that you can actually get around yeah. uh, with a, a different points of view. Yeah. And so freshness is a big, big deal. Yeah. And the show remains fresh. Yes, it and does. And I've looked at it recently because I want to see what kind of trouble you've caused for the culture. Yes. You know, and so the good news is it's a kind of good culture. It's good trouble, as they it would It is say. good trouble, and it's important to have that conversation. And, uh, and I think that the network, uh, you know, if I can be so bold, I think the network strayed for a little bit. I think after Barbara and I left, they, they made a big point of saying the show was too political, too serious. Right. Too, um, I don't know, angry to whatever it was. Right. And uh, they, they readjusted. They put a lot of former child stars in, all of whom are, I know and are lovely people. They're just not meant to be co-hosts. Right. And uh, they had uh, the bottom drop out from under them mm-hmm. with the uh, numbers. Not right. so much that it was fatal, but enough that um, it was serious. And yes. the news division scooped it up. And, so, uh, and uh, took it out of the entertainment division. I was always in the entertainment division. Barbara right. was always in the entertainment division on this, as wow. were her specials, by the way. Wow. I, think, I think news uh, had a, a prevailing interest, but, but they were programmed as entertainment. So as we wind this show down mm-hmm. today, Bill, say to me, if you don't mind, what you think the contribution, the major contribution, The View has made. Because there are many, many, many things Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of loyal viewers. Yeah, it's, it's been around the world. You know, it's an international show. Yeah. I would say that um, it was um, a way, when, I, when we first started this, um, there was this general sense that women didn't talk this way. Right. That they didn't care about these things. Right. And that we needed to keep it on the straight and narrow of daytime programming. And I remember this woman named Holly Jacobs, who I like very much. I think she works at Sony now. And she said to me, she was my uh, boss, and she said to me, women at home deserve this show. That and is and I thought, you know what? That's, God bless Barbara Walters and, the, and, the, and the, everybody who's had the guts to go out there and do that. Because it wasn't me. They're the ones who put themselves on the line. Right. And it, because women do deserve a show where they, where they can talk about anything. And yeah. that's what, so I think that's the legacy of it. And it's, I'm very proud of that. You should be. And that's a tremendous legacy. And thank you hugely for your time and this insider information that is unique to uh, Take Fountain. You're welcome. <laughs>